hello. Welcome to the Arlington Bass Club, the oldest club of its kind in Europe. My name's Colin and I will be um, showing you around. And I'm Lucy. I'll be filling in a bit of the historical detail for you. Why don't you come on in? The building as we see it today was built in four phases over 32 years from 1871 to 1902. The original building was designed by John Burnett Senior and housed the swimming pond, the changing rooms and baths. In 1875, a Turkish bath was added, along with a lounge for the members. Membership had levelled out by 1893 and it was decided to add rooms for billiards and cards. And finally, in 1902, a gymnasium was added on the first floor. It was Grade B listed in 1986 and achieved Grade A listing in 2014. Historic Environment Scotland described it as an outstanding and early example of an early private member's swimming bass, with Turkish baths and other facilities, for it survives largely as it was built in the late 19th and early 20th century. It has a good interior and was designed by one of the leading architects of the period. While in 2014, Historic Scotland called it outstanding examples of 19th century swimming pool architecture, and they have retained their special character while continuing to delight their members today. This is our swimming pool, or as they were known in Victorian times, swimming ponds. Pool is 70 feet long and 35 feet wide, built before the 25 meter became the standard. Water from Loch Katrin is recirculated and cleaned by sand filtration and then heated to 28 degrees centigrade. Trapeze and travelling rings were common in Victorian pools. The terrazzo flooring was laid in 1920. This is the reading room, which also houses the war memorial to the members who fell in the First and Second World War. Of course, they're all heroes um, and they are remembered they are remembered fondly. Andrew Miles, the architect, was a member of the Arlington. He designed many industrial buildings around the city of Glasgow. The skylights mean the room is flooded with natural light. Here we are above the main door in the recently refurbished upstairs spa. It originally had a very different use. It was the senior billiard room. The gymnasium was designed in 1902 by Benjamin Connor, who was also a member of the club. Money was raised to build a gym, but the management committee installed billiard tables in 1902 because they were more profitable. It finally became a gym in the 1980s. The free weights room was part of the 1902 extension and was originally built as a ladies' sitting room. These doors on the walls, you may have seen dotted around the building, were part of the plenum heating system and bring warm air from the boilers in the basement. Now for something really special. We can't normally go into here, the basement, but today's a special occasion, so follow me. The sand filter has been cleaning the pool since the 1930s.
Our gas-fired boilers heat the building and pond water. We're now beneath the Turkish room, where the walls are made of no fines concrete, meaning little or no fine aggregates are used. Less cement is employed in the mix, making it cost efficient. This is where the members come to relax. This is the uh, Turkish way. The process of a Turkish bath is to undress, wash, raise the body temperature till perspiring, then wash or be scrubbed down and return to a warm room to relax. Club rules make this a quiet space for relaxation. It was constructed in 1875 by Charles Drake, a Victorian pioneer of poured concrete. Charles Drake wrote, No example that I am aware of exists in Scotland of the best form of concrete roof. The domed concrete roof of the Arlington Street Swimming Baths, Glasgow, being the best of the concrete roofs I have executed in Scotland. The floor is original Minton, Hollins and Co tiles. The bench where the world's greatest dancer, Rudolf Nureyev, received a massage. Well, that's the end of the tour today. I hope you enjoyed seeing around. Be sure and come back for a proper tour when we can meet up again.